What are the themes in Paradise Lost? What is happening in Paradise Lost? In book one, Satan and his followers build their house of parliament called pandemonium. In the first book, Satan and his followers are building their own house because they have been thrown out from Eden. Now they can't live in Eden. So they are building their own house and it is called pandemonium. Pan means all. Demonium means all devils. House of all devils. Pandemonium means place of all devils or demons. Did you understand? Pandemonium is being built. Who is building pandemonium? It is Malsibar. The devil called Malsibar is building pandemonium. In book two, Satan opens debate in pandemonium. First, Satan is waking up. Remember guys, once again, remember guys, uh, Satan has rebelled against God. And Satan has been thrown out of heaven and he is lying there and first he is waking up and afterwards um, Beelzebub is also waking up. Satan and Beelzebub, his followers including Beelzebub. Satan and his followers including Beelzebub are waking up. And in book two, Satan is opening debate in pandemonium. This parliamentary activities are starting. class uh, Book three. So in book one and book two, you see only Satan and his followers. In book one and book two, you see Satan and his followers. In book three, for the first time, you see our God. For the first time, you see God in book three. God is seeing Satan going through the sky. And God is foreseeing the danger to man by Satan. God understands that there is going to be danger to man. God understands that uh, Satan will tempt man and he creates a remedy. What is the remedy that Satan creates? His son or Jesus Christ. The word Jesus Christ is not mentioned in Paradise Lost. Only son is mentioned. Son or Jesus Christ will conquer death. That is the remedy created by God. That means Jesus Christ will go to earth and Jesus Christ will undergo temptation and he will resist the temptation and he will conquer death. Did you understand? Jesus Christ will conquer death and this remedy is created. Meanwhile, listen everybody. Meanwhile, Satan is traveling through the sky and reaching an angel called Uriel. Satan is reaching an angel called Uriel. This Uriel directs, this is an angel. This Uriel directs Satan uh, to Eden. This Uriel directs Satan to Eden. And then what happens? Uh, why uh, Uriel directs Satan? Because Satan is disguised as a cherub. Cherub means small angel. Satan is disguised as a cherub or small angel. And Uriel thinks this is not Satan. Uriel shows the direction. Uriel says, go in that direction. And Satan enters the Garden of Eden in book four. In book four, Satan enters the Garden of Eden and he sees man. But at that time, he doesn't tempt man. You know why? Because uh, Satan is discovered by other angels. Satan is discovered by other angels. He doesn't tempt man and he has to leave. So in book four, he enters the Garden of Eden for the first time and he uh, is discovered and he has to leave Eden. Are you uh, hearing a noise? Are you getting disturbed by the noise? Tell me in the chat box. Is there a disturbing noise? No, thank God. because. There is nobody at home. I am alone with crayons and crayons is making a lot of noise. I'm home. My MacBook uh, mic is very good. It is not capturing that sound. It is capturing only my sound. Wonderful. <laughs> I can't help it because I just gave food to crayons and uh, after food, he plays for some time. <laughs> and uh, I can't help it because there is nobody else at home. I'm so sorry. 
Okay, guys. So that is it. I hope you understood till book four. Now let us move on. In book five, see, remember, guys, God has already understood that there is danger to man. Satan is going to tempt man. God has understood. So God is sending his guardian angel. What is the name of the guardian angel? Raphael, the guardian angel. He is sending to warn man. Raphael is going to warn man of the danger by Satan. Satan is going to tempt you. There will be danger. Beware. So Raphael is going. And in book six, a warning is given to Adam and Eve against the possible attempt of Satan to tempt man. A warning is given to Adam and Eve. And it is Raphael, the guardian angel, who is speaking in books five, six, seven, and eight. In book seven, the creation of the new world and the creation of Adam and Eve is described. Are you paying attention? In book seven, the create, creation of the new world is described. The creation of Adam and Eve is described. All the story is told. Did you understand? And in book eight, after hearing all the story, Adam is asking questions. Adam is inquiring about the heavenly bodies. What are these heavenly bodies? Tell me more about this sky, this uh, heaven. And he's asking one question. Who made the world? That question, Raphael cannot answer. Who made the world? That question, Raphael does not answer. And at the end of book eight, Raphael once again warns Adam and leaves. So you will think, okay, Adam got sufficient warning. He will understand. He will not fall. But immediately after, after that, in book nine itself, there is fall of man. Did you understand? Immediately after this, in book nine itself, there is the fall of man. In spite of the warning, they fail and fall. What happens in book nine? The important books are books one, three, four, and eight. Nine. The important books that are prescribed in universities are books one, three, four, and nine. Listen to me, everybody. In the beginning of book nine, uh, uh, Milton is telling us, till now, I have been talking about grand things, wars and knights and epic themes. Now, I am not going to talk about all that. I am going to talk about man and his fall. He's telling the occasion of the poem and then he says satan is flying through the sky he had entered eden first for several for several days he did not come back to eden now he is coming back to eden and when he came back to eden he saw the beautiful uh, you know landscape the plants and the trees and the flowers and he got envious he became jealous because satan was the most privileged son of god god loved satan at first, uh, Lucifer. Lucifer means bearer of light. Bearer of light. And then uh, Satan was jealous because God and Son, Jesus Christ and God together created Eden. And there they created man. So Lucifer became jealous because I am the most... Uh, favorite son, suddenly somebody else is coming to take my place. So Lucifer rebelled. Lucifer questioned God. For that, he was severely punished. Did you understand? Lucifer is severely punished by, and he's thrown out of uh, heaven. And Lucifer is very sad. Satan is very sad. At that time, uh, you know, you hear in, in the beginning of the book, Nine of Paradise Lost, you, see, you hear the pained anguish of Satan. Satan is speaking like a son. And then he wants to take revenge. Remember, Paradise Lost is an epic poem. But it originally uh, started like a tragedy called Adam Unparadised. Originally, the, sorry, there are dramatic elements in Paradise Lost. Are you paying attention, everybody? In book nine, especially, there are dramatic elements. Dramatic elements are there. This epic poem was originally meant as a tragedy called, it was meant as a tragedy called Adam Unparadised. It was originally meant as a tragedy 
called Adam, unparadised. Did you understand? So this play, this epic Paradise Lost has dramatic elements. In spite of all the warning, they fail and therefore they fall. And how they fall is the theme of this book. Uh, Satan is looking at Eden, feeling jealous, but he's not. it is not like a revenge tragedy. Uh, he's trying to take revenge though. He enters a sleeping serpent. He enters a sleeping serpent. Satan enters a sleeping serpent's body and the serpent comes and uh, decides to tempt Eve. At that time, suddenly, like a drama, next scene, you see Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are talking. Adam and Eve are talking about uh, their plan for the day. Adam says, let us not go uh, and work separately. We should not work separately because don't you remember the warning that Raphael gave? Uh, Satan will tempt us. But Eve says, no, let us go and work separately. Because if I work with you all the time, you are looking into my eyes, Adam. You are wasting a lot of time because of your love. That is no good. Let us go and work separately. We have to tend to the plants. We have to prune them. We have to water them. We have to fertilize them. So let us go and work separately. That is more efficient. Adam says, no, God will be angry if you are tempted. Eve says, I won't be tempted. Do you think uh, me, the goddess of this universe, the queen of this universe, do you think I will be tempted? No way. If Satan comes and tempt, tempts me and I don't give in to temptation, God will be even more happy. God will only think, wow, they were tempted, but they were so strong. They were not uh, giving in to temptation. God will be even more happy. I like this, she reasons with Adam. At the end, Adam doesn't know what to say. Adam says, okay, and uh, Eve goes away. So when you see Eve for the first time, uh, you, you there is a description, an epic simile of how beautiful she is and how uh, she's above every other creation, etc. And then the serpent sees Eve. At first, the serpent is flattering her. The serpent is praising her beauty, praising her as the queen of uh, the universe. And she's so, uh, you know, aghast. She's so surprised. Who oh, can a serpent speak like this? Only man can speak. Only Adam and Eve can speak. How come the serpent is sleep, uh, speaking? She's so uh, surprised. And then the serpent says, I ate a fruit. Eve says, which fruit? I don't know that fruit. And serpent describes the forbidden fruit and takes her there. Eve says, no, 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 we can't eat this fruit. It is forbidden fruit. We can't eat. Serpent says, why don't you eat? I ate the fruit and I became a better animal. You know, I was a base creature. I was not able to speak. Now I am able to speak because I ate the fruit. It is wonderful. You should eat it. Eve says, no, no, we can't eat it. It is forbidden. And then the serpent uh, at first praises her. He poses as her friend. He, try, he acts as if he is helping her. She is not tempted. You know, when he, listen very carefully, at first he praises her, she is not tempted. He poses as her friend, she is not tempted. And then the serpent uses reason. Then the serpent uses reason. What is the reason? He says, listen to me, Eve. I am a base creature, serpent. When I ate the fruit, I became like man. If man, you are man, you are the queen of the universe. If you eat the fruit, you will become like God. God is asking you not to eat the fruit because he doesn't want you to become like God. What will happen if you eat the fruit? Nothing will happen. Anyway, you are so powerful. You are the queen. God is not going to kill you anyway. God is not going to kill you. Nothing will happen to you. The only thing that will happen to you is you will become equal to God. And now God is saying, don't eat the fruit. But if you eat the fruit, and if you show your power, if you show your discretion, if you show that you are uh, choosing the right thing, then God will only be happy. He is anyway not going to kill you. Like this, he presents a lot of reason, a lot of arguments. And then Eve is tempted. Eve thinks, yeah, God may be tempt testing me by saying, don't eat the fruit. Maybe God wants me to eat the fruit. Did you understand? So Eve is 
thinking she, she is seduced by the satan she is thinking yeah satan might be right and then she is plucking the fruit there is an absolutely wonderful description of that smell of the fruit that tempting uh, sensation of the fruit and there's a long long description of that forbidden fruit itself and eve is plucking it when eve plucked it the whole earth shuddered it is something that cannot be reversed it is such a big decision that she has taken it cannot be reversed and the whole there is a description of the whole earth shuddering um, don't eat don't eat don't do it the whole universe is telling her but she took that decision and she ate it and when she the, you know put her uh, put the uh, fruit into her mouth the taste of the fruit is so intoxicating suddenly she felt a change in herself she is no longer eve she began to think like satan she began uh, to feel a transformation by eating the fruit so it is it is an epic style in which uh, milton has described all this did you understand and after this eve thinks uh, maybe i should uh, not give this fruit to adam because this fruit is so good the feeling i am getting after eating this fruit is so great maybe i should not give it to adam i don't want him to share this great sensation and then she thinks no maybe i should give it to adam because after i eat the fruit if god punishes me if god kills me then adam will get another eve i don't want another eve to replace me so she is reasoning like satan so she so she thinks i will give adam this fruit and then she is walking towards adam all this time adam has been thinking of eve missing her wondering what she has been doing and weaving a wreath of flowers for eve because she is so beautiful he adores her so much and then she he sees her walking towards him from the distance and at that time there is again a magnificent description of eve i i hope you understand how grand the style is how dramatic the poem is it is like watching a movie and uh, eve is walking towards him and adam is looking at her how beautiful she is how happy she is looking and then he sees something in her hand and then with a shudder he realizes oh my god she is carrying in her hand the forbidden fruit and he understands that oh she has been tempted he, without her even saying anything he understands that she has been tempted and uh, then adam is like oh my god eve what have you done why did you do it and eve uh, does and eve is trying to tempt adam like satan he is trying to convince adam adam is not convinced adam is not convinced adam cannot be tempted uh, but what he is thinking is eve has done it now god will punish her i cannot leave eve alone it is obviously so sexist for us today you know god man cannot be tempted woman is easily tempted wait before you judge that is not how it is wait wait and adam says i will also eat the fruit because he doesn't want eve to be alone now if you look at this scene and they both eat the fruit if you look at this scene from a contemporary perspective it is not like what you think don't cheap uh, don't be cheap enough to apply feminism there etc it is beyond that beyond that that is not how it is today critics have thought that thought in this manner eve you know adam and eve they can't put away the responsibility of eating the forbidden fruit for us humanity to be born somebody adam or eve had to eat the fruit did you understand adam or eve had to eat the fruit and it is eve like a leader taking the responsibility of doing that sinful thing that original sin comes on her shoulders adam is a rather a weak man adam is a follower did you understand adam is not a leader and both adam and god are weak in paradise lost both satan and eve are more powerful they are leader like so eve is taking the responsibility of eating the forbidden fruit so that there will be humanity we have to be born they they can't help it that is that is uh, what is destiny so she is eating the fruit she is more leader like she is like satan she is uh, a, a heroine uh, like or maybe a hero after eating the fruit they feel so tired immediately and they both fall asleep and they sleep for a long time after they wake up 
suddenly they look around it looks like another eden it looks like another reality they have no, another world they have never seen before and suddenly they are ashamed of their nakedness they are ashamed of their um new nakedness they are not wearing clothes and they take uh, leaves uh, as big as amazonian shields and cover their nakedness and then they feel attracted to each other uh, sexually you know before the original sin sex was only natural for them but now for the first time they are enjoying sex they are doing it for the sake of enjoyment and pleasure for the base uh, aim of getting pleasure they are doing it and uh, then again they sleep and uh, this is a uh, destiny you know our original parents had to do this sinful act so that we will all be born that is paradise lost book 9 it's a magnificent book if you read it and understand it i have made a a, a a video for you to me i will share it with you i will share my video with you explaining paradise lost it is a magnificent book there is no wonder why this is an epic there is no doubt why this is called grand style if we are students of literature at least one book nine we should understand oh my god it is an experience it is an epic experience did you understand to understand book nine every book is like that uh, wasteland is like that all the classics are like that it is not just mucking up some details for exams and somehow understanding summaries the experience of reading a book and understanding it and and experiencing the style that you should get my dear friends that is what literature is about if you get that experience any exam will be easy for you because you won't forget it you won't uh, have any problem in you know uh, writing exams and passing but it takes time you need to understand a lot of books like that at least some books when you get time you should read like that please watch the video i will ask the swalik to share in your group the video that i have made on paradise lost book 9 it is my good fortune it is like a blessing that i have been able to make that video i am fighting with my tears i want to cry thousand times when i teach this because it is so magnificent did you understand i hope you share my feelings and then uh it, so so listen to this here is a book uh paradise lost book 9 that is talking about the most horrible thing that happened according to christianity original sin a uh, man disobeyed god and he uh, actually courted death he would have been killed you know he played with all our destiny all our fate all our lives all the problems in this world is because of that this is the theme of book 9 of paradise lost but milton is dealing with it with such beauty such grandeur such majesty we forget that adam and eve are sinners adam and eve are like hero and heroine you know the way in which it is treated did you understand that is why paradise lost is an unconventional epic it is not a, a biblical epic it has hellenic elements it is about human being more than religion it is about humanity it is about passions it is about a uh, free will more than anything else did you understand so that is paradise lost book 9 it is only half an hour since i started paradise lost uh but it looks like i need a one minute break in order to fight my tears and passion 